I have a unit here. It's only eight months old and it's got a bad LG compressor in it. It's turned to an oil pumper and much low, low capacity. So I'm gonna show the swap out. Basically just change the compressor, change the filter dryer. And this system was a piston system. I have a feeling these, these compressors, they cannot take any flood back. I'm gonna open up the old one and see why it failed. But the problem on a piston, which I like pistons, units lasted 20 years out here with pistons. But on your older compressors, they can handle extra Freon, even though they're piston. They act like a suction accumulator because it's so much bigger. These scroll compressors, they can't really hold any of the refrigerant. If there's an overcharge on a piston, so I'm also going to convert that to expansion valve and not worry about doing pistons anymore on scroll compressors. And then also the telltale sign that your capacity is low is that your liquid line is right at your ambient temperature. That means you're not getting any heat transfer between the leaving liquid and the surrounding air. So even with the, with the undercharge can do that too for a different reason, but you're not gonna see the coil filled. But basically, if you can't get that liquid line warm, you're not loading up that condenser. And this is summertime right now. Outside is 75 degrees Fahrenheit. And then I got a liquid line temperature of 75 degrees Fahrenheit. So what happened is the compressor got smaller. It's also pumping oil like crazy. The oil just goes everywhere on your gauges on both the high and the low. And the condenser is way too big now for the compressor that's undersized. When I adjusted the charge by taking out half of it yesterday, the compressor stopped sweating. So it should have all the oil returned now. We'll see. I'm gonna unsolder it and then pour out, see how much oil's in there. Cause I wanna know how much oil is in the rest of the system. So I don't have too much oil when I put the new compressor. Since these compressors are identical, I subtracted the weight of the new one, took the caps off, minus the old one, and I get 22 ounces. Now I pulled out 11 ounces of oil. Let's say 10, let's say one ounce for the cup. So I need to pull out, I don't wanna go the whole 20. I'll leave a little bit of extra oil. But I'm going to pull out 9 ounces from the new compressor, so I'm going to raise that number up to 20. I unsweated my filter dryer, sweated in the new one, compressor sweated in. Now I'm going to go downstairs and change the piston to expansion valve. I wanted to show a trick to get the piston out. The piston was over tightened and the, it would not come out. So what it do is a drywall screw. When that happens, a drywall screw, I could spin it out with the drill, spinning it and then pulling with the wrench. And you can see, actually scraped it up, getting it out. It would have been impossible to get that piston out without spinning it. And then the distributor would have had to have been changed. But it's out, I got the expansion valve in, I'm evacuating now, and we'll start it up, see what it looks like. So my subcooling, it's 102 minus 112, about 10 degrees subcooling, and that's the factory charge on there. Now superheat, we got 53 minus 53, so my superheat is about zero. Now Goodman sets are superheated about 5, I use a Goodman valve. But if you want to know if you're hurting the compressor, all you got to do is look at the sweat pattern on the compressor. Now we are overfeeding a little bit. See it's sweating all the way around. 
One thing I like on those Goodman expansion valves, I can adjust it. So I'm gonna close it off one turn. Now after closing the valve one turn, subcooling went up to about 13, 15. It went up from nine. So we got more refrigerant out in the coil now. This is the factory charge. And then we can check the superheat right here. Running up. Superheat's about three. I saw it hunting three to five degrees. Superheat, and that's fine. You just don't want to be zero because then you're doing massive flood back. Now let's check the flood back. Let's see what the compressor looks like. Because whenever there's a compressor failure, it's usually not the compressor, especially a brand new one. Something with the system. Just going one turn on the expansion valve eliminated all the sweating on the compressor. And we still have five degree superheat, but we're not at one degree or zero degree, which is liquid coming back. We have basically steam coming back. So the compressor is totally dry, which is what these LGs definitely want. Now I can easily blow through the filter dryer, so it did not clog up with uh, pieces. There was not a self-destruction of pieces in this compressor. I got my 2000 watt AC inverter with Munster cable going to my golf cart battery. Got my Sawzall. Let's open this bad boy up. After five minutes of sawing, got the top popped. Just saw it underneath the weld there. All right, I figured out what's wrong with this compressor here. Let me give you an overview. First, I'll tell you what was not wrong, the relief valve. Clearly see it's closed. The way the scroll works is that you have to keep pressure between the scroll. The two plates have to have pressure together. So there's a pneumatic piston right here. You can see I'll push it down. It has a couple O-rings on it and this will fill up with gas. That seems to be a pressure relief which was fine. But let's look closer at this piston. There's an inner O-ring right here. There's an outer O-ring right there. And these are bolts. All these big holes are bolts right here. Here's your discharge. We got some discharge valves and then we have a closable like backflow valve so the compressor doesn't, when it shuts off, it doesn't go and spin backwards. There's a little piston. A little piston here which will just come down and block that off. That was all fine. Didn't see any damage there. The valves are fine. But here's an interesting thing. The pressure hole which fills this pressure piston, which again goes up, keeps the scrolls pushed together, and that force varies with your head pressure minus your suction are divided. So it's a piston that fills up. There's some interesting thing here when you follow the port down, there's a gasket, and when you go down further, Right there, we have a missing piece of metal. It's a noticeable chip missing. And that porthole is right here. It's kind of small, but with that chip missing, that port can never close. Now, if you notice on the head pressure, your suction comes on the outside, we got one loop is going to that piston pressure to keep the scrolls together. And then we have two, three different discharges. 
right there. I, they probably do that to make it sm sound smoother because you're you're letting gas through on different parts of the cycle of the rotation so it's not so it makes it a quiet compressor but that little port if you look through now it's probably not going to show on the camera right there you can see that chip and it makes sense that it chipped there so it probably by flooding this compressor now right now I got saw chips everywhere but by flooding this compressor there was some chip like from welding some little piece of metal contamination and it, it got washed up and it lodged itself in that hole when the scroll came around it chipped off the piece because it flooding will just float things up you're gonna have foamy oil you're basically gonna float everything up from the bottom when normally in, at the bottom it's not gonna hurt anything but if you're over if you're overfeeding and you're flooding the compressor you're gonna pull up all your stuff from the bottom in the foam and pump it and it just got in the right spot let's call it a piece of sand got in there and when that scroll came around hit that piece of sand it damaged the scroll and that had to reduce the pressure so that these these scrolls could never have enough pressure to to stay together and without enough pressure it's just turning into an oil pump with low capacity because you're gonna have your oil going over your edges it still pumped a little bit but it was reduced capacity because of this piston not putting enough pressure on it and this spring doesn't really do anything it it can't even move the o-rings i think that's more just for packing or something when it shuts off so that's what it is i'll have to look at a copeland and see if the copelands do that same type of piston but the the i'm not going to call it a design flaw but let's call it the design vulnerability to piece one piece of sand is it can damage the scroll if it hits it there so in hindsight do expansion valves don't do like me and do a piston I'm gonna put in some expansion valves on some other systems that have these LG compressors the compressor seems to be made very nice I like the tolerances very little wear like here's your main wear component this bearing right here so for being flooded, it is scored. This is what flooding will do. You're gonna score your bearings. But it's not too bad. You can see right there, a little bit of scoring. I can't feel it on this. I can barely feel it right there. So do what carrier says, expansion valve for everything. I liked pistons because they don't break and the old units lasted 27 years but that's a recip and recips can first of all recips can hold Freon if you notice there's no room to hold in here so this thing probably can only queue up maybe a quarter pound of extra Freon and then uh, those old recips they weren't so sensitive to one little piece of sand destroying the whole compressor Here's a zoom in of that hole where that grain of sand got caught and damaged the scroll. You can also see a lot of wear when you look close. That flood back wears that scroll quite a bit. I hope you like watching the video. Thanks for watching.